Uh, so the answer to today's quiz, for first of all, we will have to, to uh, mark appropriate quantities. So we will have to mark uh, epsilon, which is the electromotive uh, force of the battery, and R, which is the resi internal resistance of the battery. And if we, this formula is valid if the current on this drawing flows to the left, and potential differences between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So V plus minus V minus is potential difference between the right-hand side and uh, left-hand side. Uh, all right. Um, I wanted to, uh, to talk about just very few subjects today and then uh, uh, concentrate on, on examples. Um, well, <coughs> Electric current actually is a dangerous uh, um, phenomenon. And uh, so I wanted to give uh, some hints about uh, how to behave and uh, what kind, uh, what is uh, dangerous, particularly dangerous for human body when dealing with uh, electricity. Uh, if a current of about 200 milliampers, which is a relatively small current, if we think about what kind of current flows, let's say, in a 100-watt uh, battery. Well, 100-watt battery means that the power rating of that battery is 100 watts. So when it is uh, properly connected, it consumes uh, 100 watts of electricity. Now, recall that uh, power delivered to any element is equal to the product of potential difference across the element and current flowing through this element at this particular instant. So um, now 100, uh, um, the, the uh, uh, light bulbs which we buy over here are designed to operate at a potential difference of uh, 100 volts. Well, 110 volts, but it is approximately 100 volts, which means that in the light bulb, current is of the order of how many amperes? Yep, uh, that 100 watts is supposed to be equal to 100 volts multiplied by the current. One ampere, it is about one ampere which flows uh, in a 100 watt battery. One fifth of this current can be fatal to a person. Uh, Well, half of that current actually can, can uh, cause muscle to, uh, to contract. And this is actually the, uh, the, the problem with, uh, with the currents, uh, that uh, um, accidents can happen, for example, that the person grabs a, a wire and cannot release it because the electricity causes that the, that the muscles are contract. So, so whenever, whenever you try to to touch a, a, a wire to check if there is electricity, do, don't do it this way, do it that way. Why? Because now when, you, when, you, when the muscles contract, you will close your palm and you will take away the, uh, the hand without, uh, without uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the wire. Although, I mean, when I was a kid, I was doing these type of experiments. Uh, uh, however, they are unpleasant, so, so, so I do not re recommend it. I mean, what I was doing, actually, I, was, I saw a, a broken socket and uh, two wires sticking out. So I thought, well, I wonder if they are hot or not. Uh, so, well, I started with one, with one wire, although I knew that, in principle, when uh, you touch one wire, you do not close the circuit, so nothing should happen. Uh, but I just wanted to test it, so I touched it, and indeed nothing happened. Well, maybe I should touch the other wire. So I touched the other wire, nothing happened either. Well, so now I limited my choices to only two. That it is that indeed physics works, or maybe the uh, socket is not connected to the to the circuit. 
Well, so how to check it now if it is connected to the circuit? Touch both wires. They were. It was, right. Uh, <coughs> but I knew to touch it, uh, with, with, it on, with this side, so, in, so indeed my hand pulled back immediately. Uh, and actually, a person can sense alternating current. With, with constant current, it is more difficult. But then with an alternating current, you can sense it when it is of the order of one milliampere. It is really small current, and we can already uh, we can already feel it. It makes this uh, some kind of funny tiggling. Uh, uh, all right, and never touch an operating circuit with two hands. Actually, I don't, I don't advise you to touch a, uh, ever an operating uh, circuit. Uh, <coughs> but if you are too lazy to take off the bra uh, uh, breakers in the cellar, then remember to put one hand in, the, in your pocket and operate only with one hand. Because this way, I mean, the problem is that you don't really want the current to flow through your heart. Uh, uh, heart, first of all, is a chaotic system, so when it is put off balance, I mean, of its rhythm, it doesn't come back on its, uh, on its own. So, so unless it's, uh, it's not working, uh, we don't want to run current through it. I mean, we, we want it in an emergency room when it is not working. Well, we randomly do it. Well, maybe it will get in the right rhythm. And if it doesn't get into the right rhythm right away, we, tr we try it several times. But uh, if, if it operates properly, you don't want to put it off. All right, so this is about, this is about uh, uh, safety. Uh, now I want to summarize actually what we learned so far uh, with two uh, um, statements referred to as uh, rules. They even don't really uh, deserve to be uh, called laws. However, they are very useful in analyzing circuits. And the next test is going to, to be about uh, these two uh, rules. I'm referring to Kirchhoff's rules. And the first Kirchhoff rule is referred to as the junction rule. And the junction rule says, well, that if we have a, a junction somewhere in a circuit, and in principle, even a wire forms a junction, but think about a junction that at least three wires meet together. Uh, so if they meet together, then we have a junction. And in each, along each wire, I mean, along a single wire, current has the same value over here. At e at through each cross-section of the wire, it has the same value. However, if we pass the junction, current can be different. Because think about, well, how about if we mark it? Now, let's say that we have one current here, another a current over there, and a current over there. Uh, the only requirement that charge gets not accumulated here which means that if I add all currents entering the device, oh, sorry, the uh, junction, I should get a zero value. Uh, in the book, actually, it is written that the amount of current entering the junction must be uh, equal to the amount of current leaving the junction. You can learn it either way. I, prefer, I, I personally prefer to think about currents entering the junctions, and if, if I mark a current exiting the junction, it means that, that, it has a, that the entering current has uh, a zero, uh, sorry, it has a negative value. So rather than having some of currents entering and exiting, I consider only all currents that they are entering, and their sum is going to be zero. So obviously, I'm not considering here conventional currents, uh, because at least one of them has to, be, has to have a negative value if I mark it like that. It is impossible that uh, um, conventional currents flow 
into the junction from, uh, from all uh, sides. Now, the second rule is called the loop rule. And uh, loop rule is that if I choose a sequence of points in the circuit in such a way that I start from one point and that sequence ends at the same point, then the sum of potential differences across all elements, I, actually between those, po those points, has to add up to zero. Uh, for practical purposes, um, well, these points are connected like it is in, the, in this uh, diagram across individual elements of the circuit. So if I apply loop rule to this, uh, uh, to this uh, or Kirchhoff loop rule to this uh, loop, potential difference across this battery plus potential difference across the light bulb plus potential difference across this resistor should add, add up to zero. Now you have to be careful about which potential difference you take. You have to be consistent. So for example, if you decide that V1 is potential at this point minus potential at that point, for the light bulb you have to take potential at this point minus potential at this point. Now note, note that for the battery I took this potential with plus, for the light bulb I'm taking it with minus. Now potential at this, uh, I took potential at this point with plus for the light bulb. Now for the uh, resistor, I would ha this potential difference is potential at this point minus potential at this point. So I take for the light bulb, I put take potential here with plus. For the resistor, I take it with minus. It cancels out. And, uh, and the same thing comes for, for this point. For the battery, I, had, I subtracted this potential. For the, resistors, uh, for the resistor, I'm adding this potential. So the sum of those uh, potential differences of voltages uh, is equal to zero. All right. So now I'm going to turn on the lights and, and use the whiteboard to to show some exercises I will start with a very simple exercise what will happen if we connect two batteries which is actually a a, a case when for example somebody asks uh, you to jump start a car uh, what, what you do you connect well in principle you could connect the battery uh, the two batteries uh, together. So, and uh, how about if I s start just with a, a drawing of two batteries, so let's say then we have one battery. And another battery. Uh, let's say that this is plus and this is minus, plus and minus. And we, I connect now this terminal with this terminal. This is how actually we, we do when we when we help uh, when we jump start uh, uh, somebody's car that we connect. Uh, positive terminal with a positive terminal and negative terminal with a, with a negative uh, terminal. Let's draw a circuit diagram for it. So this is a battery, well, which means that it behaves like an ideal source, source of electromotive force and the resistor connected in series. Now let's say that this battery uh, has uh, electromotive force of uh, 10 volts and internal resistance is 1 ohm. And, yeah, but the battery are those two elements together for, for the analysis purpose. Uh, and now the second battery also will have a certain internal resistance and let's say that 
that that other battery has uh, electromotive force of 12 volts and also one ohm uh, resistance. Let's find out what what kind of current is going to flow in the two batteries, which way the current is going to flow, and how about if we find out what is the potential difference created uh, by the two uh, batteries together. All right. So, well, how about there? Uh, I can, I mean, I can do it in many ways. How about if I think about uh, Kirchhoff's uh, rules and I will use Kirchhoff's rules and it's up to you actually how you learn it I mean, the way I, lear I learned it I marked uh, I marked well first of all I have to mark currents which way the currents is going to flow and it doesn't matter which way so whatever way you want I, I can mark it uh, Dominique which way would you like me to mark the current in the uh, in that circuit. Well, how about in this battery, for example? If which way the current would you, which way would you like to mark the current in this battery? And I said you cannot be wrong. To the left. All right, Dominique marked wants to mark current to the left. Now until until uh, we meet another junction when we follow the current, uh, it's uh, the value of the current is going to be the same, which means that at this point, current will have the same value. Over here, the current will have the same value. However, it is going to flow now that, that way. And over here, it is going to have the same value. And on this drawing, current will, is going to flow uh, clockwise. Uh, and how many junctions do you see on the, on the drawing? Who can see at least uh, two junctions? Who can see two junctions? Uh, who can see one junction? Who cannot see a junction? And uh, those of you who said that you don't see, I, I like that. I, I, I told you to consider a junction that at least three wires meet together. I know where you saw the, the junctions. You saw the junctions over here. But this way you are complicating the problem because, uh, or, or your analysis, because if you consider this junction, that this point is a junction, in principle you, you should mark two different values of current. So this current should be I1, this current should be I2. Now, obviously you can find out immediately that I2 minus I1 is equal to zero from Kirchhoff's, uh, from Kirchhoff's junction rule. And, and from here, I, you can conclude that, current I, that this current is equal to that current. So why, why to bother with this analysis? Just don't say that here is a junction. It's a single wire here and has the same value of the current. We have no junctions over I in this loop, zero junctions. All right. Uh, so now we have to be uh, consistent with the uh, with the convention. So, for example, this 12 volts is potential difference across this ideal source of electromotive force. However, which potential is subtracted from which? It's the this potential should come with plus, this potential should come with minus. 12 volts is potential difference from this point. We have to subtract potential at that point. Now, how about the, well, think about this uh, internal resistance of a, of a battery like, like a physical resistor over there. So, uh, which potential is equal to the product of current and resistance. Consistently with the arrow, it means that I have from potential at, uh, corresponding to the tail of the arrow, of the uh, arrow uh, subtract uh, potential at the head of the arrow. 
We also said consistently with, for this resistor, I will have plus on this side, minus on that side, because, I'm, because the arrow. Uh, now, for this element, I will have plus over here and minus over there. Uh, now, you can, now, uh, how to add uh, uh, voltages when you use loop rules is almost mechanical when you mark those pluses and minuses. And, and really, whatever way you find, find that it is convenient for you, use it. For example, the book suggests, uh, well, to, well, how about, yeah, to, to move around along a, a loop at whichever sign you encounter first, put in front of that, uh, uh, of that voltage. So, if I start from, for, for example, from this point, well, and travel along or move my eye, my eyes along the circuit. Well, so when I encounter this source of electromotive force, the first uh, symbol will be minus. So I put minus 12 volts. Now we get over here. The first one is going to be plus. So it will be plus. I don't know the current, but potential difference across this element is equal to current multiplied by the resistance of that, of that resistor. I, I continue, continue. I have another plus. Now I have to, uh, it, the potential difference across this element would be current multiplied by resistance. And then I have another plus, 10 volts, and it should add up to zero uh, volts. I did not know that I did this completely mechanically. Uh, we could, I mean, personally, I prefer to do it a different way. Uh, and I, I'm going to show you how I'm, I'm, how I'm doing it, considering also the same loop. And I think, uh, well, potential difference, what, what potential difference is, I mean, what happens with potential? And whenever it grows when I cross the element, I will put, uh, put plus, and whenever it drops, I will put minus. So, from here to here, potential rises, right? So I put plus. From here to here, potential drops. So I put minus. Uh, potential across this one also drops. I go from plus to minus. And it drops over there. Oh, uh, I, then I'm inconsistent. What did I do wrong? I know, it's consistent. Yeah, everything agrees. Uh, I got a different, different equation. Do you see that? However, they are equivalent. <laughs> I can, from this equation, I can get this one by multiplying this one by minus one. Both sides are multiplied by minus one. Can you see that? So no matter how, you, how I wrote it, as long as I was, I was consistent, I got the same, uh, the same equation. Right, how about if we, uh, well, I can leave it. So let's now solve this equation. So current. Let's solve the first one. Current from the top one. Yes, so 12, minus 12 plus 10 gives me minus 2 volts. When I move to the right hand side, I will have 2 volts. Uh, I have 1 ohm here and 1 ohm here. I factor I in front, so it will be I times 2 ohm. Uh, now, it's 2 volts, so if I divide both sides by those 2 ohms, or how about if I write it down? So it's 2 volts by 2 ohms. Will give, will give me one ampere. So current of one ampere flows in this, uh, in this circuit. Uh, 
Let's find out what is the potential difference now between these two points. VA minus VB. And uh, I can choose any of those two batteries to find the potential difference. Obviously, no matter how I do it, I should get the same value. So if we get two different values, it means that I did something wrong, or we did something wrong. Uh, let's consider this battery, because this battery looks exactly like the one on the, uh, on the slide which we saw yesterday. So potential difference between this point and this point, you'll recognize that this is plus side of the battery, this is the minus side of the battery. So it's, it is equal to electromotive force, which is 12 volts, minus uh, current flowing in the battery. Now we got that current is one ampere. So it is one ampere multiplied by internal resistance of the battery, one ohm, which means that we have 11 volts. Uh, how about if I check it with the other battery? So if I, if I use now this battery, I will have to use electromotive force 10 volts. And now I have to subtract current multiplied by internal resistance. Now which current? Current flowing in the top battery. Not the current in flowing in, the, in, the, in, the, in this battery. Uh, well, internal resistance is 1 ohm. How about, what is the value of the current in that battery, however? Negative what? Negative 1. Why negative 1? Because it is marked in the opposite direction. This one, this current, uh, 1 ampere flows that way. Now, we subtract current multiplied by internal resistance of the battery when current is marked the other way. Well, how the two currents are related, the one which, we cal which we've just found and the one which we should mark, they are opposite indeed. So I have to put here minus one ampere. Um, so this gives me one volt I'm getting again 11 volts. So the potential, no matter how we do this, potential difference is going to be uh, 11 volts. All right, now how about if we think about one more uh, case. Let's say that now I connect a 5 ohm resistor to it. What will happen uh, with the circuit now? Uh, this time I will, I don't need this one over here, and let's solve it on this side. Well, can we find now, uh, can somebody see at least one junction? Who can see at least one junction? Yes, we can see a junction, for example, well, let's get rid of this one. Over here, we have a junction. Let's call it junction A. Can somebody see two junctions? Yes, there, there is another junction over here. Who can see a third junction? That's great. There is no third junction over here. Um, all right. So I show you now how to use uh, Kirchhoff rules, Kirchhoff's rules to analyze this circuit. Well, this time I cannot say that these two currents are equal because there is a junction over here. Between the between the junction, we will have the same value. However, as, we, as the current crosses the, the junction, the value of the current 
uh, changes. So how about if I think that the current flowing through, uh, through this battery is I1. Now current uh, flowing, and it means that this current, the, the same value of, we have the same value of the current along this entire uh, part of the, the entire branch of this circuit. Yeah, because between this point and this point, we don't have any more junctions. So everywhere over here, value of the current is I1. How about if I mark over here current I2? And it means that everywhere here, the value of the current is I2. And over here, I will mark current I3. Now, how about Dominique? Which way would you like to mark current I3? She wants it to flow it that way. And she has a right to do that. If you don't have intuition how it is going to flow, it doesn't matter. Stick, however, if you decide something to do something, stick to it. If you marked inconsistently with the conventional current, which actually Dominique did, but I know it because I have more experience, and some of you probably can figure it out, that if, if we mark that th those two currents flow toward the junction, this current would have to flow away. <coughs> uh, so at least one of those definitely is not conventional. Uh, now, the strongest battery really will enforce the direction of the current. So this current, for example, is indeed, uh, I mean, we marked it consistently with the, with the conventional current. With that one, we don't know really. It can flow anyway. That one will flow this way because potential on the left-hand side is higher than potential on the right-hand side, right? So, so on, uh, across this resistor, we have higher potential on this side lower potential on that side, so conventional current will definitely flow uh, to the, don't mark this plus, uh, plus and minus. I, I mark potentials, that this potential is higher, this potential is lower, but it is not what we have to mark on the diagram when we use junction rules now, because we would be inconsistent. Uh, because now, consistently with that current which Dominique selected, well, is current, she marked current from the right hand side to the left hand side, which means that when I write product of current and resistance, uh, potential on this side is going to be the minuend and potential on this side is going to be the sub subtrahend. So from potential on the right hand side, I will have to subtract potential on the uh, left hand side. All right, now let's take a look over here if we have it right. Well, we mark current flowing to the left, which means that uh, for product of this current and this resistance requires potential difference between this point and that point. So it's correct now, it's marked properly. Over here, uh, we have uh, higher, higher potential here, plus here and minus here, so this is correct. Now with this one, we have it wrong. Oh, how? Yeah, okay, let's change to have it right. So, uh, let's use junctions, junctions rule uh, uh, first. For junction A, I will have that current I1 plus current I2 uh, plus current I3 is supposed to be equal to zero. Uh, now let's see what, I, uh, what, I will, what will happen if I use uh, junction rule for point B. Well, for point B it means that current I1 flows away. Uh, current I1 flows away, current I2 flows away, and current I3 flows, flow, flows away. So I will have to mark minus 
I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal zero. Well, if I have this equation, the top equation, the bottom equation is trivial. Do you see that? I can get the, the, uh, this equation from the, uh, from the equation above. So, so really, if I use junction rule for uh, junction B, I do not create an extra equation. It's, it's not independent equation. And actually, if you have a circuit uh, which has n junctions, you can use junction rule only n minus 1 times in order to get independent equations. The next equation, the nth equation, will result from the previous equation. Sometimes it will be like over here, it was just multiplication, but it could be just a linear combination of the previous equations. So uh, if there are n junction, we can get n minus 1 equations uh, which are independent uh, from using junction rule. All right, let's now use loop rule. So uh, how about if I call this, I choose this loop, and I will call it loop 1. Yeah, so for loop 1, and how about if I started from point B, and let B consistent with the book, so I would write down uh, minus 12 volts, and how about if I move uh, 12 volts, since it is known, right away to the other side. So if I put minus 12 volt over here, I will have 12 volt on this side, plus 1 ohm times current I1, it's this one. Now, minus 1 ohm times current I2. And I came back to, to this point. Um, how about if I now use this, choose this loop. Yes, so so I, I, I take a sequence of points coming out from this point and coming back to this point. So here I have another loop. Then I will have plus 5 ohms multiplied by I3 minus 1 ohm times current I1. And I forgot something here. Uh, I forgot that one. Uh, so I had plus 10 volts, I move on the other side, I will have minus 10 volts on this side. Now over here, I have this one here, this one here. Now I have plus 12 volts on this side. If I move it to the, to the other side, I will get minus 12 volts. Have I done it right? Uh, plus 5 times I3 minus 1 times I1 plus 12 volts. I move it to the right at the side. I have minus 12 volts. All right, I did it right. Uh, <coughs> however, I can also think about a loop like this. Can you see that? So how about if I write it down? Well, also starting from that point. So I will have plus 5 ohms times I3 minus 1 ohm times I2 plus 10 volts. So if I move to the other side, I will have minus uh, 10 volts. Uh, so this is loop 3 the big one. Now if you take a look at the, at the equation which I got for the third loop, I can get it by adding the two, these two equations. So if I add these two equations, well this term disappears, this one will be copied here, 
This one will be copied here, minus 12 and plus 12 cancel, so I have minus 10, which means that this equation is not independent from the previous equation. Uh, I wrote equations which are not independent, and only independent equations contribute to a solution. Uh, well, so this one, how about if I just erase it? It's not a new equation. And as the, as the rule, when you look at the diagram, look how many of those fields you have. So for example, in this circuit, you have two fields, one over here and one over there. And this is how many independent equations you can create using uh, loop rule. And now it doesn't matter. I mean, for, for a while at least. I mean, definitely this way you will never make an error. Always consider the loops around these fields. When you get skilled with that, you can sometimes figure out that it makes sense, for example, to use this loop and that loop. But then you cannot use a loop around this uh, uh, field. Do you understand that? So if you look at this circuit, we can only use loop rule twice. So we can use, we have two junctions, so we can create one independent equation using junction rule, and we have two of those, those fields, so we can create two uh, independent equations using uh, loop rule. Altogether, we can get three independent equations which have to be satisfied simultaneously. And, uh, well, sometimes you, you can, I mean, if I, uh, if I build uh, a circuit, uh, I mean, develop a circuit, you can get quite a number of equations. Uh, therefore, I strongly recommend that you learn how to use your calculator, how to solve linear equations. Um, because... I know that most of you would like to solve by substitution. And with three equations, it's actually OK. Yeah, so for example, you solve for one unknown from the first equation and substitute in all remaining. Then you uh, solve for another uh, unknown and substitute in remaining. Well, it, in three, it's, it's relatively easy, right? I, you will have to, to solve two times, three times three times and then plug back the, the result. Uh, however, if you have seven equations, it's already a mess. <coughs> so it's better, for example, I mean, if you don't know how to use calculator, use Kramer's method to, uh, to uh, solve uh, equations. Uh, so in order to do this, we have to calculate appropriate determinants. Uh, so how about if I calculate those determinants? So the general determinant for, for this set of equations will be 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and 5. Uh, so it is 1 times minus, so it is minus 5, plus 0, plus 0, minus 1, minus 0, minus 5, uh, so I'm getting minus 11. All right, now let's say that I'm interested in current I1, so I need to, uh, to solve this, uh, to, to find the specific determinant, and make that, that I had to, in the first column, put the, the answers. And over here I have 2. So it means that it's 0, 2 minus 12, 1 minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 5. So it's minus 5, 0, 0, uh, plus 12, 0, uh, minus 10. Uh, did I do it right? 
minus 5, 0, 0, 12, 0, minus 10, yes. Uh, so it is 12. Actually, uh, why don't you why don't you solve this set of equation any way you you want it? Uh, because we don't have time to finish it. So and by tomorrow, I want I want uh, you to give me the answers. And by the way, I I w I really insist that you use your calculators to solve the equations. So learn how to use your calculator to solve linear equations. So this will be uh, all for today, and see you tomorrow. <laughs>